I'm sure you know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. Power. What is the use of God's power if we never go for it? I want to encourage somebody tonight that there is an exceeding abundantly above amount of God's power available to someone who will reach out in faith and first believe it and receive it by faith and stand on God's word from yeah. Ephesians chapter 1, I believe it is, or chapter 3, somewhere in Ephesians 1 through 3. What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe what you wrought in Christ, the power that raised Jesus from the dead and set him at his own right hand, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that's named. So I want everybody to know there's power available right now for you here, for those of you watching, welcome aboard here. We just want to encourage someone to step out in the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for uh, what you accomplished, what you had when you were at the right hand of the Father, when you left glory to come down to earth to take upon yourself our sin. When you paid that price for us, Lord, and you rose from the dead and that exceeding greatness of your power, that resurrection power, you brought it for us, to us, through us, and from your word. So we pray right now for someone to step out and believe for exceeding Amen. greatness of power tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I like talking about that, so I do when I get the chance. Thank you, Dolores. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Dolores. Good to have Bob back. Thank you, Grant. Thank you, Larry and Joshua. Welcome, everyone, to service tonight. Hallelujah. Our subject tonight is the heart of God. The heart of God, the point being the love of God. Yeah. The heart of God, the love of God. Amen. Father, thank you for the heart of God, the love of God that has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We thank you for a touch from heaven. Thank you for the saints that it's sloppy, it's nasty, but they came to church anyway. So I pray they get something from heaven, a touch from heaven, uh, something super abundantly above all we could ask or think. So, Father, we ask you to bless the people that have joined us online. Bless the people that are with us, and bless us as we share the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I thought you were going to smooch me right there. Uh, hardly. <laughs> Not in church. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy <laughs> Valentine's Day. We had our first date on Valentine's Day 34 years ago. 34? We were like little Whoa. kids. We were five. <laughs> I was five. You were a little older. <laughs> you have more gray hair than me. <laughs> amen. Amen. Hey, guys, um, nobody wants to hear bad news, but when the Kansas City Chiefs were celebrating in that uh, open area and half the city came to see them, there was a shooting today. And the nine of them were kids, and they're in critical condition. Father, we pray right now for those kids and anyone that was shot in Kansas City, Missouri, Lord. We just pray right now, God, those innocent children, we just pray the blood of Jesus over them, deliver them, protect them, keep them. And, Father, we just pray for anyone else who was assaulted or hurt or shot, and we pray for peace and restoration and healing for that yeah. city now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. All right, so not to take away from our joy that we have right now, God's heart is full of love towards all people as he sacrificed his only son. So our point there would be that uh, you're going to have to help me with some of these because you, uh, yeah. yeah. All right, his heart is full of love because um, it was his will. It was God's love that sent Jesus to the cross. And so we know that... And Jesus' it, love. It's, of course. That sent himself. I like to talk about the Father, and you get to talk about the Son, and together we'll... Talk about a, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, and we'll have <laughs> harmony. Amen. And uh, absolutely. So God's heart is full of love. Jesus' heart is full of love. Holy Spirit's heart is full of love. 
towards all people as he sacrificed his only son. John 3:16. Uh, that's the first scripture I ever learned, and I hope we all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Praise God, we're not going to perish, but we have now. Right now, by faith, we have eternal life abiding in us in the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit. So because he's been given to us, uh, we, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Lo, he's with us to the end of the world. And then after that, for all eternity, we have the Holy Spirit, the third person of the divine Godhead. If you think about how much God wanted a family and how much he loved us, I mean, he loved us so much that he gave. And that's the love of God. That's the agape, the unconditional love of God towards you and me. He saw us before the foundation of the world. They already had a plan to redeem us back, to make a way for us to have that restored relationship with God. And how cool is it that the creator of the universe wants to have a personal relationship with each one of us and loves us so much that he, he has words in his book that are just for us. They're for everybody. But you know how it is when you open up the Bible and there's a word on a page that is right for you in that moment. We've had that happen our whole lives so many times, and I know a lot of you have too. We're at the right moment at the right time. That's how much he loves us. He didn't leave anything out. And I just don't think we can stress that enough. The more you meditate on God's love for you, the bigger it becomes on the inside of you. And there isn't anything that we can do to earn it. There just, there just isn't anything that we can do to make God love us more, if that makes sense. It's just what if, what if a legit question is, what if I don't feel it? Love is not based on feelings. Okay, what's it based God's on? God's love is based on his word, Praise and God. it's based on his choice, and he demonstrated it for us. So we have to believe it, and we have to receive it by faith. The more you build your faith for that truth, you'll know it. It becomes a knowing in your heart that is far greater than your feelings, because it's so settled on the inside of you. And if you're not at that settled place that you know, you know that God loves you, that he has you, then my encouragement is to keep meditating on it. That word meditate, to mutter, to say over and over. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you say, God loves me, God loves me, God loves me. Every time you have a thought that's contrary, God loves me. I'm beloved. I'm loved and I'm accepted. I'm accepted in the beloved. You're a part of God's family. He loves you. And so you just stay on it and you stay on it and you stay on it. And all of a sudden, it just settles down and it's settled and once that love of God is settled in you it's settled there isn't anything that can separate you from the love of God yeah what if uh, yeah so we, we uh, we're examining this and in my own life and everybody's life anybody as a Christian faith comes by hearing and then uh, believing comes by 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 declaring and so I took this scripture here for my life. When they told that to me, I was one of the ones that raised my hand, or I didn't raise my hand, but in my heart I raised my hand. I don't feel the love of God, but I learned from good teachers that 
the love of God is in my heart, in the person of the Holy Spirit, and I can be a love person. And therefore, you know, I used to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, yeah. and I'd look at that. But this was so much more powerful to me because 13 is... 13 is like the characteristics of God's love. Okay. Love is patient and kind. kind. You can say that over yourself. I'm patient. I'm kind. I believe the best of every person. Love doesn't take account of a suffered wrong. You know, that's such a big topic in the world today. Everybody's taken account of a suffered wrong or a perceived suffered wrong. Have you ever been accused of a suffered wrong that you didn't even know you committed? Everybody. That's like a big hot thing going on. Love takes no account of a suffered wrong. I take no account of a suffered wrong. You can, you can declare those things over your own over your own life and you can build those you can build your faith and build those attributes into your life where they become a reality yeah love never fails and right. that's in 13 and therefore 13, uh, yeah. if we will believe the word of god and that's the key to what we present continuously on a regular basis is the powers in the word so in order for to in order for any of us to experience the love we have to connect to the word of god get the power out of the Word of God to uh, uh, come alive in our hearts, and then all of a sudden a day comes where you go, I know God loves me. I'm not worried about it anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't have to have an experience of God's love. It's great if you do, but you don't. You just trust Him by faith. God loves it's me. I simple. love people. People love me. And if they don't, I don't care because God still loves me. I mean, me. here's the deal. You know how many people are reading self-help books? That's like a multi-billion dollar industry. Self-help books, self-help this, self-help that. Love never fails. When you operate in God's love, if you will develop the love of God in your life, mm -hmm. you won't fail. You would think that every Christian would just run to develop the love of God. And yet it's one of those topics that that a lot of people kind of glance over. And I don't know if that's, you know, part of the enemy's grand scheme to keep us out of the love of God because there's so, our faith works by love. Your faith isn't going to work if you're not operating in God's love. His grace is there. His mercy is there. If you're just learning these things, you're not going to operate in the love of God 24-7 overnight, right? You just aren't. So God in his grace and in his mercy, he's so kind towards us. We believe him for things even in our flawed self and he answers our prayer. I kicked in the door of the subject when they told me, perfect love, perfected love casts, casts out, out fear. fear. Hey, you know what? Love Some, yeah. Sometimes we, you know, guys, maybe they don't want to go there. Oh, I don't want to be mushy. I don't want to be soft. I don't want to be that, 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 that. But most of the same guys deal with fear. And when you hear the truth that perfected love casts out fear, yeah. sign me up. There's no torment. There's no torment. In love. In love. The enemy Praise has God. no inroad to your life. When you've got that love perfected, matured, your faith grown up in that. So by saying it, that's part of it because sure. someone may, you know, shrink from the word confession, but the Bible says confession, and we declare confession hold brings profession. So profession hold fast your profession of faith. faith. Absolutely, and therefore, perfected love. Is casting out fear in my life, yeah. and it's driving fear out. What an answer. What an answer for someone. Find it in the Bible. Look it up in the back of the Bible. Go to your concordance. Find a concordance. Get a concordance. Know these things. Memorize them so that when fear comes up, you can say, no, 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 no. His perfected love casts out this fear. Fear is torment, and I'm not having any today. In Jesus' name. I, I walk in love, the and peace, therefore the I don't fail, and the, and the fear's got to go. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. You, it's a fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. That word hold fast, it's like you better grab hold of it 
and don't let go. Hold fast your profession of faith without Without wavering. wavering. For he's faithful that promised. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Going forward, amplify, unless you were still talking. No, go ahead. Amplified such hope in God's promises by faith. Guys, if, I mean, that's like the cloud on your phone. It's just oblivious. I mean, it's out there. But you have to bring it into your life. Mm -hmm. Such hope in God's promises by faith. So therefore, the, reason, the way I bring them into my life is by saying them and claiming them and saying that somebody goes, well, I don't want to be in that claim. Yeah, that's what you do in order to receive. You claim the promise. You stand on the Look, promise. Look, if you're going to bake a cake and you want it to turn out, you better follow the recipe. Absolutely. Whether you like it or not. That's just the bottom line. This is the word of God. So if you want things to change in your life, We have to be doers of God's word. Such hope in God's promises never disappoints us. Why? Because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Free. Free. It's all in there. I've heard people over the years time and time again, Christians, well, I'm just not a loving person. I don't need to be kind or all those things. Yeah, yeah, you got it. It already is in you. Start acting on it. Whether you feel like it or not, there's lots of times I would like to give people a peace of my mind, especially on construction sites when things are not going the way they're supposed to go and walls are where they're not supposed to be and cabinets are not straight and things that are not done the way they should be done and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes I scratch my head, shake my head. You can't just let it fly. That isn't going to solve any problems. You have to stop shooting your faith in the foot. Absolutely. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Um, Hey, the Holy Spirit doesn't live in your head. So when we're talking about the heart here, we're talking about our spirit. And so if we differentiate uh, the spirit, soul, and body, I want to focus on my spirit uh, so that I know that the Holy Spirit lives in my spirit. Therefore, the love of God, for sure, positively, absolutely, is in my spirit because the Holy Spirit's in my, my spirit. Then, therefore, I know this way I can know. Because if I, if I lean to my heart being my head, which a lot of people do, or the, the soulish person, and which is not wrong, it's just that that's not the whole equation. I want God in my spirit, and I want the love in my spirit. I want the well, power that's there. in my spirit, of course. Right. And so I don't so want it to be head knowledge. I want it to be in my heart. Amen. All right, so because God's love is abundantly poured out within our spirit through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. 1 John 4, 15 and 16, uh, whosoever confesses Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. Therefore, we know, you guys, everybody, we know that God came into our spirit, and he lives in our spirit. Amen. And 16, and we have known and believed that the love of God, the love of God that God has for us, God is love, and anyone who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Now, I, I, I thought that meant that You know, this whole love equation that if it wasn't love, whenever I failed love, that uh, God, you know, when you're young as a Christian, you're not sure about some of these things. You want to help someone with that? If you think of it, anything on that? Or should we just move on? Well, again, you take it by faith. We know and believe the love that God has for us. So we take that by faith. Not by our feelings. We take that by faith. We believe that God loves us, just like you believed that Jesus went to the cross for you. If you can believe that, then you should be able to use that same faith that to believe that God loves you. And if God loves you and you love God by acknowledging these things, then his love is working in you. You are abiding in the love of God, and God is abiding 
in you. God is love. We're talking about a person. God is love. He's love. If he's in you, his love is in you. And he loves you. Hallelujah. I'm just stressing it over and over and over. Because I know so many people that I, I just pray that the light bulb goes off. That you get it. You get it. You get how cool you are. You get how special you are. You get how how amazing and incredible and unique you are. There's nobody else like you. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you explain this one because I think you wrote it. God's heart wants to reassure our heart and preserve, preserve us. Well, no, you wrote that. Uh, and you came up with Philippians 4-7 from the Amplified correct, Bible. Correct, but I don't use the word assure us. I use assurance. So maybe I misspelled it then if I wrote it. <laughs> All right, God, wa okay, God so wants to assure our heart. Pastor the Bible Steve says, hey, you guys. The, okay, together. let me just, yes. Okay. Uh, well, sometimes when they get to your desk, they change, and I don't know about it. So anyways, yes, but is hey, true. this is just, yeah. But assurance, praise God. Assurance is not in our brain. Assurance is in our hearts, in our spirit. And I can have that peaceful feeling. My mind could be whacked over worry, fear, or whatever, tribulation. Uh, but the assurance that comes in our spirit that everything's fine will overtake the fear in your mind if you will do what the Bible says to do. First of all, believe in that assurance that's in your heart, and when you receive it, then you cast those imaginations down, and you, you, take you fight the good fight. You take authority. Thing, right? Absolutely. You take your authority. And so you win those battles of assurance in your heart because God is in there. Amen. All right, going so forward. So Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God. When you take your when you take your cares or your worries or your different things to God and you begin to lift them up with thanksgiving and prayer supplications to God the peace of God that peace which reassures the heart that peace which transcends all understanding that peace which stands guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus is yours you have that Peace. That's where it Psalm came from. It, 40, came, it, came, it came from the Amplified Bible. Mm -hmm. That's where it Psalm came from. Psalm 40, verse 11, from the King James. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. God's love, his loving kindness, preserves us continually. God has feelings of mercy and empathy towards people in his heart. Hebrews 4.15 from the King James. Do you want to read that one? For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So because Jesus walked a human life, he's been through, he was tested in all points. And in that testing, he understands the feeling of every infirmity, every, everything came against him. And in all points, he was tempted like we are, yet he never failed. Jesus never failed. Jesus never sinned. Jesus never failed gave in to temptation. He's the rock of our salvation. Amen. The Amplified Classic says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liability, liability to the assaults of temptation, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are yet without sinning. The Amplified says, knowing exactly how it feels to be human. Jesus understands. He does understand what you're going through. He does know what you're feeling. Feelings of rejection or those feelings of shame or different things. He was, those things came against him as well. Those voices came against him. Yet he didn't give in to him. He was perfect love. That was like the shield of faith that quenched all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Was love. That love in him, he operated in it. And I think there's a key there as well. Because we reap what we sow. If you begin to sow love, 
so unconditional love. You make a choice to love others, to respond in love. Every time you have an opportunity, I'm going to respond in love. Holy Spirit, help me to respond in love. The more you step out in that, the more you practice God's love operating through you, enemy's not going to have any, he just isn't going to be able to get an inroad in there into your life at all. Hey, there's, a, there's something written here that needs to be commented on yeah. from my perspective. Sure. It's the assaults of temptation. And uh, we cannot, it's the weapons of our warfare. It talks about uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It talks about all these things. And therefore, when we take it like warfare, and we realize that obviously with, in, in God there's peace, unlimited peace and love and joy, all the fruit of the Spirit. But the enemy comes and he assaults us with temptation. And therefore, to be assaulted means, as everyone probably understands, if somebody's walking down the street and somebody walks up to them and jacks their jaw, that is an assault and it needs to be responded to. And therefore, we respond to assaults of temptation and put our, our, our spiritual dukes up and we put up our shield of faith and we take our sword of the spirit and we prepare to engage and reject and take that thought captive by force. And see, I'm, I'm a person that thinks this way and it, it works. It works. If you realize that the uh, weapons of a warfare are not carnal and if you realize that uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood and all those things, you realize I'm engaged in a warfare and I'm not going to take it passively and right. just get, my, get the snot kicked out of me. Right. I'm me fighting. Either. We're fighting. She's a fighter. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are. We are. Why would you let the devil win? When it comes right down to it, why would you let him Assault you with temptation. When he's a defeated foe. Absolutely. Jesus paid the price for us to overcome and to be victorious. And so I want to walk in absolutely everything that he paid the price for to the best of my ability. I don't want to let the enemy win in any area of my life. It's a fight of faith. You better put up your dukes. Because if you don't, where faith is concerned and, and the love of God and standing up for righteousness, standing up for, the, for what Jesus did for you, we are the enforcers of the kingdom of God. You've been called to the army. So be a good soldier. I got to say something to that. It's unfortunate that there's so many of the women around here that are bad to the bone in spiritual things and the guys are mopping up behind. It's not acceptable. Gentlemen, take your places. Stand up. Get involved. Take your authority. Be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Amen. Take onto you the whole armor of God that you may not get whooped. Amen. Amen. We want to. We want to win. We want you to win in every area of your life. The children of God should have the best relationships, the best marriages, the best everything. More peace, more love, more joy. You can't have joy without Jesus in your heart. People can pretend they're happy and having a good time out there, but it's not lasting. It's not real. There's so much fake stuff going on out in the world. That whole meta verse, meta whatever stuff, everything's going to be fake. It's going to be a virtual reality of what you think. You're going to live this meager life over here in reality, but you're going to think you're happy because it's all fake. No, no, no. All right, Hebrews 4, 16. God invites us into his presence so we can experience his mercy and grace and help in times of need. Therefore, let us with privilege approach the throne of grace 
That is the throne of God's gracious favor with confidence and without fear so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find his amazing grace to help in time of need an appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment. God loves us so much that he invites us into his presence. What an amazing promise and privilege that he says, come on, come into my presence, come boldly, because this is, I want to help you, and I want to give you everything that you need in me to be okay. What a tremendous verse in Hebrews 4.16. May I? Yes. When we were in Toronto, I had a vision, mm. and the vision was that we, all of us were in the throne room of God, and there were uncountable no, uh, amount of stairs up to God's throne. And I, I, I just saw in the vision all these people trying to, on their for all fours, climb up the stairs up to God's throne into his presence. And the scripture says, come boldly to the throne. And I saw Jesus Christ come down, if we'll believe, and just grab that person and run them right up to the top without effort. No effort needed but yeah. faith that Jesus Christ has invited us to the throne to obtain mercy, to find grace, to help in time of need. Yeah. I don't have to struggle at the right. base of the stairs travel. if it was that way, that the stairs were innumerable and you're climbing at the bottom trying to struggle your way up to the presence of God when Jesus says, come boldly to the throne and he comes to get you and takes you right up to the presence of Almighty God. Praise God. So these are just thoughts that we had, different things concerning the love of God that we, that we put on paper tonight. So the heart of God towards us. 1 Corinthians 2.9 from the Amplified. But just as it is written in Scripture, things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him who hold him in affectionate reverence, who obey him, and who gratefully recognize the benefits that he has bestowed. Be a thankful, grateful person. Instead of complaining, like the world, be grateful, be thankful. Be a blessing and blessings will come to you. God has great things in store for us, but we have got to get our speaking in line with his word. You have to open up and say, okay, God, it's your way. And this is how we receive those things. That's a simple message. God, it's your way. It's your way. It's your way. I sent a text to someone who... Um, had mentioned, you know, they, they might be considering ministry. And uh, I said, a great prayer to pray every day when you get up. God, not my will, but yours be done. <laughs> your kingdom come, your will be done in my life. What a great way to start the day. Not my will, but your will be done today. Amen. Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. That's the heart of God towards us. He's watching over us. He perfects the things that concern us. I just love that. I love the one we just passed on, oh, yeah, uh, 2, 9 of Amplified. Mm -hmm. All that God has prepared, right now it's prepared. It's all there. It's all available. It isn't wait. It isn't wait. It's prepared now for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, and who obey him. Old-fashioned Christianity believed that we need to obey God. I don't think it's old-fashioned Christianity. Well, it's, let me just say it's back then that they preached it all the time. Well, it's being preached that way around the world except in, in the compromising churches. <laughs> yes. That's unfortunate. It is because people are missing out, and it's a sad, it's a sad commentary. But you see it in the body of Christ when 
the body of Christ in this country is just as messed up as the rest of the world. There's no difference. Like, that's sad. It is. Doesn't have to be that way, and we're not going to be that way. Jesus is coming back for bride, a church without spot or wrinkle, and we get to be a part of it because we care and we love his word, and we're going to love his, we're going to continue to love his word, and we're going to continue to be doers of his word and not hearers only, so we're not deceived. I usually say that. Yes, you do. You may I've, continue. I've doing learned good. well. <laughs> We've learned together. I agree Amen. with you. All right. God's heart of protection in his love. First John 5, 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. So if you go back to the scriptures in first John chapter four about abiding in God in his love, he is love. Then we're born of God. When you're in love, you're following after him from the Amplified Classic. We know absolutely that anyone born of God does not deliberately and knowingly practice committing sin. That's our heart. That's why we come to church, right? We're not, we're not deliberately trying to mess up. But the one who has, was begotten of God carefully watches over and protects us. Christ's divine presence within him preserves him against the evil and the wicked one does not lay hold or get a grip on him or touch him. The more perfected we are in the love of God, the less opportunity for the evil one to actually have an inroad into our life. Don't answer the door when he knocks. Yeah. This one says, hey, right. open, does not open the door. Right. You know when the enemy's outside the door. Do not open the door. This one says that the one that is born of God does not sin. The wicked, Then therefore the wicked one does not touch him. We can live yeah. in a high plane, we the can. highest. Yeah, amen. All right, God wants us to guard against anything that takes his place in our heart. Little children, believers, dear ones, guard yourselves from idols, false teachings, moral compromises, and anything that would take God's place in your heart. We talk about this all the time. What it's... What did the devil say to Eve in the garden? Did God really say? How many of you have had good Christian people that have been in church for a long time think that you are too much of a Christian? Has that ever happened to any of you? Don't you think you've taken this just a little bit too far? I mean, we could compromise just a little bit. Why not go here? We're not going to compromise. Jesus didn't compromise. He's our example. We're not trying to be like other Christians. We're trying to be like Jesus. I take his word literally. I don't care what anybody thinks. I right. take the word literally. I think that's the difference between us and a lot of people out there. And, you know, let me tell you something. We live in a lot of peace. <laughs> we enjoy the peace of God quite a bit. The love of God, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm just not willing to give those things. I am I'm not willing that. to give those things up. In fact, I want more. I want more of the joy of the Lord. I want more of his love operating in my life. I know that I've, I'm a lot different today than I was 30-some years ago, but I got a long way to go to be perfected in God's love, and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I pray that all of us, that's our heart. We're going to keep going. We're not going to stop. Jude 21, guard and keep yourselves in the love of God. Expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, which will bring you unto life eternal. And then God wants us no, to... No, this one, we, can't, we cannot pass Jude all right. 21. This is critical. Yeah. Keep yourself. In the love of God. Keep yourself. That is amazing. That Jude would dare say that. Keep yourself in the love of God. Right. That means that you're staying in the word. Why? Because right. that's where you know that God loves you because he said so in his right. word. So if I struggle with acceptance, if I struggle with God's love, then I keep myself in the love of God by staying in the word. You know, the, the little books of John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, you're going to find an awful lot of love in those books, the love of God. 
you're going to find the love of God in the Gospel of John. Do a word search on compassion. And you'll find all sorts of scriptures. Loving kindness. Do a word search on God's loving kindness. It will begin to build a picture in you of how special and loved you are. Proverbs 4.23, God wants us to guard our heart. Are you going to say it? You want me to say it? What? Go ahead. Say it. All right. right. Keep, guard, watch your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Keep and guard your heart, Amplified Classic, with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. One of the scriptures talks about contaminating influences. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you rinse your food before you eat, you, you wash lettuce and tomatoes and cucumbers and vegetables and because you want to avoid contaminating influences to come into your body. You're guarding your body from contaminating influences. The Bible talks about contaminating influences. Guard your heart. Guard your life. Guard your mind. Your mind from contaminating influences. And if you do, you'll be a vessel of gold, sanctified and meet for the master's use. Second Timothy chapter 2. Praise God for Second Timothy chapter 2. If you want some fighting words, Second Timothy chapter 2. Uh, to uh, avoid contaminating influences is in, found in Second Timothy chapter 2. Amen. 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 All right. So, uh, oh, we're done. I'm enjoying this. I want more scripture. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, does anybody have a question or a comment on the love of God? We have a, we have a minute before I have to close up service. This family knows the love of God very, very well. I appreciate the fact that these are love people. And, uh, but if you don't, if you're young in the Lord and you just struggle with that, or you could be a Christian for a long time yeah, and you've absolutely. just never had a breakthrough in absolutely. God loving you. Yeah. Some some churches don't present it. I mean some, some churches only re present it. Some people are have a blockage. They won't receive it because they don't think they're worthy. worthy. Or they're they're past. They can they can get to the point where they know a hundred percent settled in their heart that God loves everybody else, but they really struggle to receive God's love for their own life. So I think that can be Christians that have sat in churches that have heard this preached for years. I know only one solution. The just Word of God. Old word. things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. You know, just taking a particular scripture on the subject and just feed that into your spirit until it changes your thinking. Uh, that's that's well, the solution. Well, and get in agreement. Prayer. Ask people to pray with you. If you've struggled to receive the love of God or to know that God loves you, there's no shame in asking for prayer. It's not a commentary on your lack of faith if you struggle in that area. I believe that the number one thing the devil wants to do is keep us from the love of God. And so if you've struggled in that area, we're not going to call people forward tonight, but if you've struggled with that, you can grab us at any time. You can call us on the phone. We'll pray with you. We can go in the back and pray with you. There's no shame in asking for prayer. If you need a breakthrough in the love of God, then you need a breakthrough in the love of God. We went to Toronto. That cost us a lot of money back in the day. Why? Because there was an outpouring and a renewal of the Spirit of God and the love of God that was very much in manifestation. And so we wanted to go find out what it was all about because we were looking for a greater measure of the love of God, and we got it. And so there's nothing wrong with pursuing the love of God and asking people that you know have a revelation of the love of God to pray for you, there can be that transference. So. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Amen. Amen. Looking for the wrap. grace of our God. Amen. Yeah. Pardon me?
Absolutely. I love the salvation prayer. Would you say that with me, all of you? Uh, your God in heaven? Your God in heaven. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that he died on the cross for me. And was raised again from the dead. And was raised again from the dead. That I may have eternal life. That I may have eternal life. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. And be my Lord. And be my Lord. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I receive forgiveness now. I receive forgiveness now. And I receive eternal life. And I receive eternal life. And I thank and praise you for it. And I thank and praise you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll receive the offering tonight. John will be in the back. Um, if you're giving, if you're giving online, it just needs to be done through our website, threedegreeschurch.com. And for God so loved that he gave. And that's the love of God in manifestation. When you love God, then a natural outworking of that is that you want to give to support the gospel so that others can hear the good news. And so we give, and that's just part of normal Christianity. And uh, the blessing is is that he takes the things that we give and he multiplies them. He multiplies the resources sown and he increases the fruit of your righteousness. And he makes sure that the church has what it needs, that there's leftover for the church to give out as well, which we do. And it's just an awesome, it's just an awesome way to live. And so we'll pray over the offering and then we have something uh, for you guys as well. So Father, thank you so much for the privilege and opportunity to sow into your kingdom by sharing our resources with your church. God, we purpose to use those resources to further your kingdom, to further your work, to continue to meet needs of the people that come here and beyond. Thank you, Father, for multiplying the seed that is sown, for increasing the fruits of righteousness in all of our lives. It's for your glory and your honor that we give tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, um, Pastor Steve had intended to buy chocolate hearts to give to everybody as a symbol of God's love, except when he went to the store, they had Easter candy out, and most of the Valentine's candy was already gone. So that seems a little weird. It kind of like changed what we're doing. Larry's full of the joy of the Lord back there, and so we just dumped it in the basket, and if you're here tonight, you can just have some candy. Chocolate. It's not candy. Out. It's chocolate. There's a difference. It's chocolate. It's chocolate. It's just to celebrate you and how much we love you and we wanted to bless Chocolate's you. Chocolate's good for you. Candy's not, so let's call it chocolate. <laughs> That's true. Chocolate has very I good have, properties. I, if you say it's true, I was just getting here, but... I mean, the sugar's a, not so great, but... <laughs> The chocolate itself. Anyways, be blessed, you guys. There is we dark love chocolate all of you. in there. You can pick out the dark chocolate. Bob, you can have some chocolate too, bro. <laughs> all you, right. You played awesome guitar. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway. you too, buddy. We love you guys. Tomorrow night, Zoom Bible study, 7 o'clock. And uh, Revelation class is Saturday wow. at 9 o'clock. And then we're doing evangelism, our street outreach, on Saturday at 11 o'clock here. So I have um, a controversial subject for Saturday. Oh, all right, Pastor Steve. Okay, so you are all welcome to join in as you are able. Have a blessed rest of your week.